Brownie number 19 in the Brownie Extravaganza. New Classic Brownies by Alice Medrich. I converted the cups and spoons and ounces into grams, increased the batch size, and did a quick comparison because the ingredients are so pared down. Unsweetened chocolate, no leavener, very little vanilla or salt. The simplistic method also has me wondering how it will compare to the other brownies in the experiment. This comparison chart has the green brownies being my favorite, the blue being my favorite, but they don't meet the criteria of a fudgy crinkly crust traditional brownie, the orange were the clear losers, and the last are more European. Lighter in flavor and the texture is cakier. Achieving a fudgy brownie is not that complex. Less air, more moisture, and a nice amount of fat creates a dense crumb, which if baked a little bit under and cooled properly will become fudgy. The shiny crinkly crust is a little more elusive. It's a result of a high percentage of sucrose. Not brown sugar or 10X, but straight table sugar. There's a line though, not enough and you get a nice crust, too much and the entire brownie is ruined. Whole thing is too wet and mushy and not a good texture. The goal is to get right into that sweet spot, right in the middle of the fudgy and the shiny without going too far in one direction for either outcome because one is on top and one is inside. The method is to melt the fats and then add the egg and after a nice cohesive batter is formed, you fold in the flour. Some methods have you making a ribbon with the egg. To add flavor complexity, many recipes rely on brown sugar or instant espresso, and even more recipes use cocoa powder with boiling hot water to bloom the chocolate flavor. So the entire time I'm mixing this batter, I'm thinking, how is this going to compare to my top six? How can it possibly compete? As a practice, I do not add expensive inclusions like chocolate chips or nuts during the testing phase of a recipe experiment. So the flavor has to stand on its own, as does the texture. And for the record, I love Alice Medrich. Her work is professional, it's well-researched and tested. I can feel the stretchy batter is going to have a shiny crust. I know it. I also like the increased batch size. I think it fits in the pan better. The directions called for an ice bath immediately out of the oven. I took this step out to keep things consistent with the other brownies. And while this brownie was very good, it needed just a little more flavor and just a little fudgier texture, just a little. It did, however, have a beautiful crust. But this is not a brownie I wake up thinking about. And an ice bath is the opposite of simplicity. I also don't think a brownie should need to be refrigerated to meet the criteria. The ingredients, formula, and technique should achieve the desired effect. I have five solid top tier brownies that I'm going to use in my Bake Off. So it would be a waste of time and an insult to tinker with this recipe. This recipe might be perfect for some people. It just doesn't meet the brownie extravaganza criteria. Comparing the top five is going to be challenging and nuanced, but what a pleasure.